Um, yes. The other disclaimer is um, I'm not a native English speaker, so things might happen. Um, <laughs> maybe I say something and you understand something that was not what I meant. Um, it's supposed to happen in communication. Um, so I'm going to try to talk about safe spaces. Um, my name is Egger. Um, there's this website, egger.de, or you can just Google me and find me pretty much everywhere. Um, if you have something to add, to say, if you have questions, if you, if you find a trick I didn't know so far, or if you have any experience, please talk to me. Um, because this, this safe space concept is quite, of, uh, quite important to me um, as I'm involved in different groups and, um, uh, how's it called, conferences. Um, I'm, I've seen so many bad things and, and heard so many bad things, and let's not start about reading. Um, you all know what a safe space is, right? <laughs> huh? I actually forgot something, but I'm not going to mention it now. Um, <laughs> Just, just give it. Um, that, that, that. I'm, I'm going to try to go a bit into the reasons why. S well, wait. Yeah, you're good. Take a break. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Who agrees that the term safe space doesn't really make sense? That it should be called safer space instead? Okay, that's quite a few of you. So I don't have to. I uh, have to explain. Um, that our society is pretty much bullshit. Um, <laughs> we, we try to prevent people from actually breaking down all the time. Um, so I'm, I'm going to try to f go a, a bit into the reasons um, why safe spaces or so-called safe spaces fail to be um, safe for some people. Um, well, yeah, there's all this big stuff. Um, microaggressions, we had microaggressions, we're not talking about this one, right? Um, yeah, it's not a big deal. Um, so, <laughs> so what, what I've seen at mostly um, queer and transgender meetups was um, all those people come with a lot of identities. Um, one of them, uh, in case of a transgender group was being a transgender person. Um, but you have all those other identities. Um, people have colors, people have shapes, people have heritage, people have been raised and educated in different ways, they have interests, and all those things that are defining us, um, that are, that's why I put this labels thingy. Um, we, we are all carrying around those labels all the time, um, which pretty much sometimes obstruct our goal to see the human. Um, because we're all humans with a lot of facets. And there is no easy way to put a human into one word. Um, well, yeah. Of, of course, this list can be con continued forever. And <coughs> so th the interesting thing is when two of the, those identities um, pretty much exclude themselves, or um, how do you say that? I'm sorry, it's a foreign language. Contradict. Contradict, yes, perfect, thank you. Um, <laughs> when, when two of those um, identities contradict each other, um, can, can you think of something? Um, <coughs> okay, uh, uh, let's stay with the example we just have, like developers um, being male or, well, there is nothing inherent in software development that you need a certain gender. But still in our heads, or in some people had, people's heads, th those things seem to contradict, contradict each other. Um, that's that. Do you know the concept of hyperdescent? No. Um, oh, awesome. I, I have to. <laughs> <laughs> Yay. Um, so I was shocked when I, when I saw this. Um, this is when you, when you have parents with, who are from differently privileged groups that you always inherit from the less privileged group. Um, and I found this to be true for our identities as well. 
if you, identi if you identify or you're being identified, that's actually the more important thing, um, with different groups, you usually inherent or, or well, what, what you end up with is the less privilege you get. Um, I mean, y you can see me. Um, I'm not sure what's going on in people's heads when I enter their store or apartment or company, whatever, when they see me for the first time. Um, so some people think I'm gay. Some people think I'm lesbian. Some people see me as transgender. Um, and usually I get treated the way um, the way the group gets treated that the person hates most. Is that, is that, does that make sense? With the least privilege. Oh, huh? With the least privilege, exactly. Um, well, that's that. You just learned a new word. <laughs> um, yeah, then we have biases. Um, you probably know the implicit, implicit association test where you can pretty much prove that even less privileged people usually have biases against their own group. So, I mean, like I said, society is bullshit and we have all been educated <laughs> to, to believe so many fairy tales that are just completely made up. Um, xenophobia. Um, do, you, do you know what that means? Yeah. Uh, would somebody Say that? Hate against foreigners. Close? No. Fear of the yeah. Oh, awesome. Awesome. This is actually, yeah. Um, it's also called fear of the unfamiliar. Um, so I think this is one of the most effective things we can do. Um, make the unfamiliar a familiar thing. Um, I'm not sure how we can do this, but I think we should just mingle and mix all the people. Um, no. um, I forgot so much stuff. But okay, role models. Um, no, nah, I don't wanna talk about this right now. Um, uh, okay, there, there is this thing, um, I'm asking you to change your language today, um, and we already had all those nice examples, like, please don't call me a guy, and so on. Um, People have to hear things 12 times before they learn it. Yeah, but I guess, I guess that that's not true for you. <laughs> you already heard it 12 times? <laughs> um, <laughs> no, but um, I specifically put the children on here, um, because I hear so often, well, yeah, I've used that word my whole life. I'm not gonna change it right now. And I'm like, what the fuck? When are you gonna change it? <laughs> or, or <laughs> um, or when are we gonna change it? Because, I mean, language is alive and we shape language. And if we don't start speaking in a different way today, it's not gonna be finished tomorrow. And there are more children being raised with the old, Speak. Um, yeah. Personal crusade. Um, who likes the word or the term political correctness? <laughs> okay, there's there, there are a few hands. Um, oh, that's that's fun. Actually, um, so I'm I'm German. I'm I'm sorry for that. <laughs> <laughs> um, Fun fact about Germany, there's no fun in Germany. Get back to work. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, um, well, I, I'm not sure. When I was around 18 or something, I was, I was asking myself, um, wh what do people understand as a Nazi anyway? And I, I, I just asked random people what they, how, how, the, how they define the word Nazi. Um, well, you wouldn't believe kind of different answers they gave. This is, this is, this is really, really astonishing. Um, pretty much the same happens when I ask about political correctness. Because when, when I interviewed people, or asked people about it during lunch and so on, um, I get really different answers. That was striking me. Um, well, 
in this case, there were like pretty much two different camps. People who said, well, we, we need this, and people who said, well, this is bullshit. Um, they didn't say it like that, but you could hear it. Um, so, um, I got a few quotes, like, no, uh, I, I trained it down to two quotes. Um, like, political correctness doesn't change us, it sh shuts us up, by Glenn Beck. Um, and, well, the other one, the other one, you're gonna, you're gonna celebrate it. Um, it's, I got a feeling about political correctness, I hate it, it causes us to lie silently instead of saying what we think. And when I read this quote, I was like, whoa, how can you say something like this? I mean, really? Really? <laughs> okay, but let, let's, let's, let, let's make this more obvious. Um, blop, and I, I think this is one of, one of the major problems we have in modern society, that we know it's not, um, how's it word, acceptable to say something or to think something but we want to do it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, I, I'm always, always not sure how to pronounce the name. It's Neil Gaiman. Um, I had this, had this wonderful idea in his blog. He, he said, I started imagining a world in which we replaced the phrase politically correct wherever we could with treating other people with respect and it made me smile. So let's try this. Let's try this out. Let's see what happens. When we say treating other people with respect doesn't change <laughs> us, it shuts us up. Um, this says a lot about the author. But this one is even worse. I got a feeling about treating other people with respect. I hate it. It causes us to lie silently instead of saying what we think. And I, I think this is pretty much the core of the problem People hate, even though they know it's not okay, they're, they're being told all the time it's not okay, and they're gonna find different words or whatever to just keep on hating. And this is, this, uh, from my experience, if you have something else, this is what destroys safe spaces. When, 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 when you're going to a support group for your specific, or for one specific, problem, identity, thing, you're suffering, and then you get hated at for other things. Um, so I found the silver bullet of social interactions. <laughs> um, we, we had this earlier today, uh, um, empathy. Um, we we all already had this great definition, but maybe let's just repeat it 12 times. <laughs> um, what does empathy actually mean? Um, so seeing with the eyes of another, listening with the ears of another, and feeling with the heart of another. Um, so for me, the important part about empathy is that I acknowledge the fact that other people are feeling different because they, they have different experiences. And I mean, it's, it's a completely different being. And I know that they're different, but I try to feel the way they feel. I try to see the world from their perspective. Um, oh yeah. nice. um, I'm not sure what, what, what else I wanted to say. Um, Can I ask a question? Of course. Thank you. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> Well, one thing that actually works is creating a support group and when people want to join, ask them how they want to try to 
not hurt other people? The answers you get are so amazing. Um, okay, uh, I did that. Um, but what am I going to say? Listen, look at people, like body language often says a lot about people. Um, listen. Hmm? Uh, ask, asking questions is also awesome, yes. Um, one thing that has partic particularly helped me in my life is trying to repeat what a person, uh, I mean, what I understood what the, what the person was trying to tell me in different words. You wouldn't believe. Um, okay, yeah, you're saying you're, you're trying to imagine yourself in a different <coughs> situation. And yes, this is how I see empathy. And this is, of, um, this is what, we, we, what we've seen in the image earlier, where the other person what was not in the same circle, but close to it, and actually had to do a step to get there. Absolutely. Yeah, please. Ah, yeah. It's just more acceptable this way. Okay. Hi. <laughs> Hi, yeah, I really love what you're saying. So could you share some examples in terms of that really beautiful question when you ask people, how would you not hurt somebody else in order to join the group? I think that's beautiful because it strips away the layers and then gets you to that space of where everybody wants to be seen, heard, and understood. So if you could share some examples, that would be great. Like right now? <laughs> well, um, well, um, so yeah, the, the range is huge. I mean, some, some people, oh well, no, uh, one person actually wrote me like, that's an odd question. And I was like, nah. Um, <laughs> most, most, most people say, listen, ask questions. Um, some people actually write a lot of text, not just listen. Um, at least in two cases it made me cry because those people were really thinking about it. Um, if, you, if you're really interested, um, contact me yeah, and sure. uh, uh, email or uh, anything. I think it's a great question. And yes, this, uh, this helps really in, in setting up a space. I see more hands. I'm, I'm, I don't have any clue how much time is left. <laughs> no time? <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Yeah, a little over. Come back, Chief. Finish your thingy. But well, you're good. I'm, I'm going to show you a heart as the symbol <laughs> of love. And thank you very much.